How are we supposed to find enough food to feed them out here in the wilderness? Come on, we're asking the same thing. God, how am I supposed to make these needs? How am I supposed to meet these needs? How am I supposed to make ends meet? How am I supposed to do this? How am I supposed to find this? How am I supposed to get to the, we're all asking that question. And remember, don't forget, they're looking around and they're in the middle of a wilderness. They have no food and there's like 10,000 people. And again, they've completely forgotten. This is the disciples completely forgot how God had fed miraculously almost 20,000 people just recently. When you're in a wilderness, it's easy to forget how God has provided, is it not? I mean, it is so easy to forget the miracles that God has done. Exodus chapter 15, we see this over and over, by the way, in Scripture. And in Exodus chapter 15, there's the miraculous story just right prior to this we all know about, and that is the Egyptians freed the Israelites. The, God did this incredible miracle, the greatest miracle probably maybe in Scripture, parted the sea. They go through the sea, get on the other side. They're in the wilderness. They're in the wilderness. They're only three days in the wilderness, three days, and they're thirsty. And they start complaining. They're like, what is this? Why'd you bring us out here? What's this all about? Three, just three days before that, God had parted the Red Sea. Just three days. Here's the thing. Complaining erodes confidence every time. Complaining erodes. Turn to somebody and tell them, stop your complaining. Stop your complaining. Some of you have been wanting to tell them that for a long time. Have you not? Yeah. Stop your complaining. Because here's what, when you complain, it erodes your confidence. It, it, it creates bitterness. It, it, it breeds in you anger. It breeds doubt in you. You got of, to avoid complaining. So how do you remain confident? How do you remain confident in the middle of chaos? Write this down. Remember his miracles. Remember his miracles. You got to find a way to do this. Let me give you some practical things. If you were to look into my office, what you would see is a wall of miracles. It's, it's, I call it my wall of prayer. And, and just this week, I got up and I was looking at all these different pictures. I have pictures of different ways that God has shown up in the life of this church. And I was looking at the miracle that God did when he sold the land and, and reduced our debt over one point, like five million dollars, over a million dollars taken off of our debt. Then I looked at the cell tower picture and I thought, man, God miraculously provided $400,000 for our church. I have checks on the wall. They've been cashed. These are copies, but they're checks. And I looked at those and I was reminded of the provision and the ways God provided. Uh, pastors Eric and Sybil. Pastor Eric was leading us in worship today and his wife Sybil leads our kids ministry. They, they have a blessing board in their home. They just, anytime God answers a prayer, they put it up on the blessing board. This year, I started a generosity journal. Every time that God meets a need, I just, I write it in a, in a journal. And I, and I have a list. I just keep this. I figure out a way to remember. Listen, you got to remind yourself, he did it before, he'll do it again, my God is faithful. He did it before, he'll do it again, my God is faithful. Come on, say that with me. He did it before, he'll do it again, my God is faithful. Remember his miracles. 